Hey there, and welcome to part six of the Draconian Transmuter. I'm Iken, and we grabbed our rune when we left off on the last episode. Finished up with the spider nest. And yeah, before I'm gonna start running, I felt like summarizing a few thoughts about the life of a transmuter in general, because I just realized when I looked up my spell book that I'm sitting on a lot of spells I don't really use anymore. Spider form is not too interesting anymore, since I would lose a lot of armor class. I can show it here. If I go into spider form, I'm down to AC2. I mean, okay, that's 32 evasion, but compared to this, I feel not too well in this form. And same goes for the ice form. I'm down to very crappy defensive values if I go into these forms. And I'm pretty much done with these spells. So I checked out if I can find some amnesia, but I didn't uh, run into it. Uh, long story short about all this is uh, transmuters need to adapt into the mid game. The dream was or still is to pick up statue form eventually, but lately I ran into these wonderful spells here and I felt like they are a good assortment of stuff to finish up because I have a lot of armor class being a great draconian. I have a decent long blade at this point. I mean, it's not awesome, but it's good enough to get the job done. And yeah, picking up these spells would make a decent hybrid build out of me that can certainly, uh, yeah, finish up the game, I think, if I don't have the luck to run into anything better. Because these spells are all hexes. I need to dabble a bit into air magic for the silence. But overall, I have all options I need. I can break lines of sight and stuff like that easier with the darkness. Invisibility helps a lot against uh, hordes of uh, not so smart enemies that are mainly dangerous because of their melee capabilities. Uh, well, but it works also for Draconians down in Zod, so. This spell keeps being useful along the game. Silence, on the other hand, shuts down uh, those enemies who are not affected by invisibility. And that's usually spellcasters. And yeah, between that, I can cut out a lot of enemies to... Uh, which could get dangerous for me. So I think that's a good way to go, and I hope I'll run into something more interesting along the way and I finished up with spider and I felt like I'm gonna run into elf one first before I go for adapts or shoals um, mainly because I hope to find some uh, shop level along the way because uh, I didn't find any too interesting books so far for my playstyle that is I picked up uh, regeneration which is at a good point and yeah, I'll definitely want to train regeneration a bit more to get it under 10% before I uh, switch over to hexes again. But for now, I want to get this regeneration going on a permanent level because this spell helps me a lot in surviving all these fights I'm facing. All right. last episode I sacrificed some uh, interesting stuff. I sacrificed the ability to summon stuff and I sacrificed aptitude on everything. And turns out this could be a poor choice in the long run since I uh, intend to switch into other spell schools. But, well, if I have to I can grab experience along the game. There's plenty of experience hanging around uh, the whole game to grind up uh, necessary things, but I feel like it's not as horrible as it looks like. The minus two aptitudes are a bit bad, but minus one is, well, it's not great, but it's also not horrible. So, all of one, here we go. Let's check 
our options here. On this spell book, it's a bit sad to see that, uh, well, Beastly Append could be somewhat useful, but apart from that, Regeneration and Alistair's Intoxication, which I can't use yet, uh, kept being the most useful spells along the board. And yeah, the starter book of the Transmuter just doesn't offer too much for me anymore. Um, I didn't run Blade Hands because of this excellent shield I ran into. Okay, wizard. Let's see. Okay, we got it. Uh, Blade Hands brings you down to two-handed uh, weaponry. And I wanted to have this shield going on, and that's why Blade Hands went down to something I didn't use. Alright, so... There's this situation is getting a bit uh bad for me, so I'm gonna run back a bit. Certainly gonna try to smack down as many mages as possible when they're uh blinking next to me. But apart from that I wanna fall back. There was so many summons in this fight. So running back and waiting it out can uh, can easily get uh, rid of the summonings of these guys, and that's making everything a lot easier. So, speaking of adapting into the mid game, this character went more or less to fight away. Um, well. I gotta say, if you play a transmuter and you actually want to be able to finish the game, you're better off um, trying to grab the first uh, set of tools you run into that will work for you. Because chances are the dream of the statue form might not even come true at all in this game. I might not find this spell at all, or uh, some situation like down in Zot or something like that, or I'm certainly not able anymore to learn this spell for this game. So you gotta pick up the first set of tools that will work for you, that feels like you want to use it and then go for it. And that's one part I don't like too much about the transmuter background. Because it's not really bad, but it's not also not not really cool because you drop so much along the board and you uh, wait for a spell you don't have in the beginning. All right, so two mages, two knights, a bunch of summon stuff. Hmm. I feel like I could attack the first one in my face, and there's a third one. The Deflection Amulet here does a lot for me, combined with a high shield rating, these uh, things are always really nice. But I'm pretty heavily surrounded here. Am I still good, or is this already bad? Don't know too much. I feel like I could fight it out, yet still this mage keeps summoning stuff into me and... Um, Surrounded by two knights. Well, I'm gonna try to bring down this archer. Or no, better, this mage. He walked into my face. That's something I can live with. I'm gonna try to take down the knight now, but I'm slowly losing a lot of HP here. So, for the last guy, I'm gonna switch into Sea Invisible. Maybe I'm gonna stay there, actually. Because. Poison resistance was very, very useful for a spider layer. I forgot to put up the regen. Silly me. It's not cool at all. Alright. So charm's up to 5 anytime soon. And it's one. once that's happened, I think I'm going to train some more necromancy. And hope this will bring me to the point where I'm at a good percentage. I mean, I think I could leave it there, but... Well, 
Oh, a bit of a completionist, I admit, I admit that. Okay, so Charms 5, it's still 11%, I want to be under 10. So let's put up Necromancy next. Let's see what will happen. A Yak. Is that a shapeshifter or is it a real one? We never got to know. Alright. Ancient Weapon. I'm gonna finish this scimitar. Because until I run into some really cool stuff, this is gonna be my primary means of killing stuff. So. I also realized that I don't need these arrows anymore because sticks to snakes is a thing of the past. And I really need to uh, pick up some amnesia scrolls soon. But so far, I didn't have the luck to find any more. So, well, auto pickup is still on on these arrows. Let's turn that off. Don't need that for sure. All right. I'm gonna run back for this group and use this corner. This stops the summoning of the mages. As long as they don't see you, they don't summon you. That's the basic rule of this game. It's certainly useful to make, to take advantage of this fact. Alright. That's one mage down, and there's a bunch of guys standing between me and the demonologist. I think I can rip through his first summon pretty easily, but this chaos spawn... Ooh. I don't see this thing being too much of a threat. So I'm gonna take care of the mage first. And now I'm gonna head into this demonologist, because you can't tell, uh, blink around like the mage. Why I wanted to take down the mage as quick as possible. And look at this. All these projectile spells getting repelled. Alright. <clears throat> My first sorcerer. Let's check this guy out. That's 19% of banishment. It's quite a lot more than I want to want it to be. So right now, uh, this is pretty bad because you would get a few shots and there's only 1% chance of paralyzing him with this wand. So that's not really an option. And I don't have any means of putting up more magic resistance at this point. I do have a scroll of silence, but I feel like that's overkill in this situation and I don't see me having any spells to bring this guy down quickly enough but I think I'm fine hoping to kill him quickly enough famous last words but Rue also protects me from a lot of spells so I felt like with one sorcerer I can't take the odds but I'm certainly not running uh, deeper into elf after level 1 because you will always meet a few more of these right now. I also feel comfortable of the idea of getting banished and surviving it because I have a lot of powerful tools mainly starting with the regeneration which is one of the most important things in my eyes down in the abyss. And I'm dying here. Why am I dying so hard? Must be the soul eater draining me the whole fight. And this red back ripped through me as well. Alright. So certainly misplayed that. Let's teleport. This won't go good at all. I'm going to quaff into a curing potion here as well, because, well, I have so many of them. I messed that one up. Silly me. Totally forgot that I'm not poison resistant anymore, and that's... I think the major part would blew me up so hard in this fight. Overall, I, uh, I realized that 27 AC is not 
too much anymore for this point of the game. The, uh, there are a lot of dudes uh, bringing in hard hits against me. This is a battle axe of electrocution. Hmm. Let's see if I can manage without swapping into the elect uh, electric resistance bud. Wow. Since this thing was alone, I felt comfortable. Alright, we're at this spot again. And this guy is certainly getting on my nerves. So, we didn't get mutated by the Nekosek. All these uh, bad things in me are voluntary uh, sacrifices. They're not demonic nature. Those are divine scars. All right. Looks like we didn't find any uh, extra spell books here on this level. That was part of the dream when I went down here. But for now, I really want to take it slow and do the first level of a few branches before I delve deeper into uh, either shoals or depths or vaults because right now I don't feel like I'm complete in terms of my build. I feel like, oh, speaking of which, oh well I'm drained, but Necromancy is at 2.6. I want to see how it goes when I'm at 3. Alright, so that's elf 1. And like I said, I don't want to go deeper. I feel like the next stop should be either level 1 of Vaults or Shoals. I feel like Shoals should be a good place to be right now. Because this Reflection Amulet negates a lot of uh, the major threats down there. I have a bit of MR extra. That's good enough. I don't need to see Invisible though. What I'm going to pick up instead. Huh. I feel like poison resistance could be a good idea because of those sea snakes hanging around there. They are actually pretty poisonous. But, well. I prefer some extra magic resistance, but one can't have everything. So there's the sea snake. It's certainly not hurting us too much here. I also have flight on one of my items, and that's something I should spam here. Because flying is very useful in, uh, around the shoals, and every time there's water involved, I should actually be flying. Because this will uh, negate the melee penalty while standing in water. And standing in water is something you can't avoid here. You will get your feet wet down in the shoals, that's for sure. So I'm avoiding auto explore here a lot. That's basically every time I'm in this branch the case. All right, we can make a new sacrifice. So I could sacrifice even more essence. So that would be minus 30 MP. But I don't want to get too crazy on my mana pool. Sacrifice purity, that would be even more dexterity drain. Hmm. Sounds pretty dangerous too, especially since Rue considers this to be a trivial sacrifice. And there is again the third time that I get the option to sacrifice my ability to drink potions, and I'm gonna reject here. Rue brings some new stuff. There's certainly more I can sacrifice. All right, so I'm getting mesmerized by this Merfolk avatar, and I'm gonna fly because that'll make everything a lot easier. Because right now, while I'm flying, I can actually chase and fight him. Because these avatars will fall back until they stand in deep water. And if you're not flying, the situation is a lot more difficult to take down. <clears throat> So these harpies take a while to kill, and we've reached level 18. 
So what we're gonna pick. I feel like strength or dexterity could be pretty useful, but right now I feel like uh, going heavy into uh, <clears throat> intelligence because these spells I want to cast are all level 5 and 6 and the more intelligence I have the less uh, skill points I need to invest. And that's pretty much the idea here. So let's regen back up. Should be using regen more. So let's see. This looks like there's some nasty surprise in there, so I'm gonna fly around this corner. There's either nothing or everything in there. So I've got some spare recharge scrolls, so I'm gonna recharge this wand of acid. Because I think this should do a lot for me. And look at that. There's a shield of reflection. I certainly want to have that. There's a Katobal Pass, and I was right, this is a vault. And for Katobal Pass, they're pretty easy to kill as long as you're aware of moving as soon as you're standing in this cloud. As long as you're moving. Uh, the moment when this cloud hits you, you're most likely not getting petrified by it. But if you take one derp into this situation, you end up being petrified and getting mauled by this dude. It's not so much fun. Alright. Some vault I didn't run into yet. Let's check 5%. Yeah, that's not much. Alright, we did this. And I've earned this shield of reflection. Huh. It's plus two. It's a bit worse than the uh, protection one. And for now, I'm going to stick to the protection one. But I'm going to keep this shield. <clears throat> because with this shield, I can eventually go for a different amulet. And that might be very, very interesting. <clears throat> So let's fly. I think that's pretty necessary. Failed twice. Failed three times with 11%. Ain't that crazy. <laughs> All right. So there is a file of floods. That's pretty nice. All right. <clears throat> Got some sore throat here. All right. So, Schultz is pretty doable for, uh, for now. The flying part certainly helps a lot here. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should go deeper here. I'm not too sure yet, but uh, it looks like I'm pretty capable of dealing with the threats of this area. I'm not too sure if I want to go for uh, Schultz 4, though. And also a nice part of being a dra Draconian is that I don't need to breathe anymore, so I can traverse this deep water and chunk down this nymph. All right, so let's fly. I don't want to get debuffed by this water too hard. I'm very hungry. One of the downsides when I don't auto explore too much. And you don't get to automatically eat anymore. Very useful feature. was differently back back a few patches ago but that's one quality of life improvement i do enjoy a lot all right tell you what guys i'm gonna go for schultz 2 here i'm feeling pretty confident here and there's seven percent on regen that's absolutely enough to kick some butt here all right 
So next up, I want to learn some more poison and it's transmutation, it's right? All right, so for now, I'm going to bring up poison magic a bit more because I really want to be able to uh, cast Alistair's intoxication because I feel like this could be a very uh, efficient tool of mass confusion later on. And combined with the invisibility, that's a good set of options. Book of Tempests. So, yeah. I'm gonna write some powerful spells in there, but not my cup of tea, actually. I'll try to keep flying as much as possible. Reflection makes me feel very, very safe down here. Normally I'm a bit more scared of all these ranged fighters, but, well, with 20 shield and reflection up, these are not too, too much to uh, be worried about. That's a bunch of Cyclops. Looks like this is another funny little vault. All right, giants all the way. I ran into a giant's fortress. Well, so let's have a look on this co uh, frost giant. I'm resistant to cold, so this could be going pretty well. Let's take a few swings carefully, though. I'm going to put a regen to. But turns out he... didn't do too much to me. So let's finish up with these Cyclops. This guy smacked himself with his own rock. That's what I love about reflection. Okay, so what's the reward? A potion of flight. Hooray, hooray. That's everything, huh? All right. What a nice little vault, thematically, for sure. All right. Hello there, Jorun. I have another potion of a uh, scroll of silence at my disposal, and I feel like, yeah, that's that's one of those situations. I don't need to be too uh, too afraid of uh, running out of silence too uh, too soon, because I'm gonna learn this spell next. So I can blow up the scroll without feeling too bad about it. And Jorgen definitely is a good reason to blow up a scroll of silence because he can cast shatter. And, well, let's have a look at his power potential here. So... What's this wrong now? I'm just super laggy here. I'm not getting, it, getting into any numbers on his chatter. Huh. Weird. Normally I do get those. All right, but the point is his shatter is pretty devastating. It's a level nine spell after all, and not every mm, unique you face at this point of the game has a level nine spell at his disposal. Even though I'm flying, I didn't want to risk anything here. I'm barbed, yet still I'm going to move to um, get not abused by these pole arms. It's worth uh, getting beaten a bit. And there's an alligator snapping turtle. These are pretty hard hitters. Yeah, and they can reach attack. So I got Corona, and that means I'm a bit scared of this uh, turtle because it should be able to hit me easier here. 
and yeah, right now the situation is winnable, but I'm a bit afraid that something else might join the party here. Alright. So I'm still in a bad position to fight this turtle because it can bite over the heads of his of its companions. And that's pretty much more a situation I want to prefer. I want to be able to smack this thing. But I feel like my damage could be insufficient to bring this thing down quickly enough. So what I'm gonna do. I could file Fluxid. That would bring me a, an ally, although I wonder if this still works since I can't have any summons. I think this thing will turn against me pretty soon. So the first thing I want to get rid of is this merfolk. Even though this uh, turtle is chewing me up pretty hard here. But I'm not out of options here. So the question is, don't want to go into Apocalypse or into Draw Power, but I think I'm going to Apocalypse here. Bam. I'm a bit drained here, but the Snapping Turtle got paralyzed, so I'm able to finish it off decently. Gonna fly against this nymph. Makes it a lot easier to bring her down. Alright. That's the, uh, the sweetness about uh, Apocalypse, that it leaves your enemies often debilitated if it doesn't kill them instantly. And that's a pretty nice piece of this spell. Although I want to reach the last pip of uh, Faith with the Rue pretty badly. And because this will mean a huge power up for all of my skills. Alright. Ancient leather armor. I feel a bit sad about being a draconian which is not able to wear any armor. Artifact leather armor could be pretty sweet for a hybrid. But that's not for me. Not for not in this game. There's another nymph. Let's turn on flying. And smack her down. There we go. That's Schultz 2 done. Let's head into 3. Oh no, 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 no. It was a bit too early. I realized I missed out a corner down there. And some gold. Alright, I think I can auto explore from this point on. Even though this Draconian wants to explore the whole map completely. Alright, it's my first Impaler. That's actually not bad meeting one here. Mm, well, he died pretty quickly. That's a good thing. Okay, now we're gonna go for. Uh, Schultz 3. No snapping turtle. No big deal. I'm drained pretty heavily from using Apocalypse, but well, I think it was the cheapest way to finish this situation. And hello there, teleport trap. Oh boys. That's pretty horrible. So, first thing, I want to fly. And these things, they're very fast, so more likely than not, I'm not uh, able to outrun this thing. So, worst case scenario, I could blink or I could fear. Hmm. That's actually a thing. Let's try this fear. This would be the cheapest way of. Uh, getting rid of the situation, but it doesn't look like I'm getting out of this that cheaply. So let's power leap. 
to get at least closer to safety here because the Kraken's options of uh, following me are limited and this choke point I can actually hurt him a lot With Kraken, it's very important to uh, avoid getting swarmed by the tentacles. If you can fight them tank tentacles one by one, uh, they're pretty doable with a decent combat skill. Like that. Took me only one leap of faith. Book of Geomancy. I think there's deconstruction in it. That should be the starter book for Earth Elementalists, ain't it? Yeah, I'm right. So Pass Wall is a pretty useful spell, and Deconstruction too. It's also bringing me the option of learning Earth Magic, yeah. But on the other hand, I could also learn Silence, and yeah, I have some inventory slots left, so I'm just gonna carry it around for now and try to get Alistair's online because I feel like that will provide me a lot of safety when I'm getting surrounded or something like that. All right, so this weapon boutique doesn't look too interesting. They had a glowing hand crossbow, which could be better than mine, but I don't want to blow up my money at this point for something that's only maybe better. All right, that's a big merfolk pack, and I'm gonna fly preemptively, just in case I'm gonna lose the ground under my feet. I'm gonna kill the small ones first because they also hurt. It's not only the impaler which hurts. All right. But turns out I'm pretty able taking these guys down. I imagined this would be more of a problem actually. I'm stocking up on throwing nets. It's very nice. Nets are very useful tools. That's in some situations. All right, bunch of fawns, but that's no no problem at all. Looks like it's gonna be one of those runs where uh, it's all up to Schultz for trying to kill me as hard as it can. <laughs> there were only a few runs where I uh, cleared sh the complete Schultz without at least one pretty funky situation like the one with the alligator turtle there. That definitely counts as a bad situation. And speaking of bad situations, this looks like a regular pattern. There could be some baddies in there. Let's read that scroll first. Oh, it was a scroll of summoning, but nobody loves me anymore. So no, nobody came. All right. That's a lot of merfolk, and I'm forced fighting them while they're in water and enjoying some evasion bonus. It's not the ideal situation to fight merfolk, but... I feel like I'm able to do, uh, to do so. Let's take down the siren. S as soon as she's dead, uh, I can retreat at will. But this doesn't look too problematic here. Although this fear is a bit obnoxious. But as soon as you break the line of sight with the, the, uh, with the setter, the spell will wear off. And the fear doesn't protect him from uh, smacking him while he's standing in my face. It only prevents me from moving closer. So that's a plus two ring of protection. Interesting. Mm, it's not the best thing right now. I would prefer something with more than plus two. But I'm gonna stick to that until I need. Uh, poison resistance because two armor class more is actually more useful than uh, poison resistance when there are not so many poisonous enemies around. But for now, this is a nice option for the second ring. 
I think. All right, Manticore and Fawn. It's just a lot of ranged attacks, and I'm getting barbed. Sorry. All right, so I'm surrounded by a lot of uh, ranged attackers, and I'm barbed, so I don't want to move actually. So, best idea for me being deflecting missiles is just to put out my hand crossbow and let them mainly kill themselves on the reflected missiles. There we go. Simple and clean. Alrighty. Without my equipment as it is right now, I think this would have been one of the more uh, dangerous situations you can face in Schultz. The combination of a Manticore and a pack of ranged enemies can prove pretty annoying because these barbs will hurt you a lot if you keep moving. But luckily this was no problem at all. I was well prepared. So I'm gonna move even though I'm barbed with one guy, I can't allow that. All right, so that's Schultz 3 done. I'm, I'm taking a nap here in the sea. Those dream sheep make me do it. All right, poison is at level five. I'm not too sure if I need poison at a higher level or some higher level of transmutations will do the trick. That's, uh, well, I mean intoxication is a level 5 spell. So I'm gonna bring a poison to 6, I think. And then I'm gonna uh, try to finish the rest with transmutations. That should be the best trick. All right, so down to Shoals 4 we go. And I'm standing right in front of a big party here. And the easiest trick would be to take the first guy just upstairs and ruthlessly slaughter him up here. And I'm going to repeat this because three of them should be not too much of a problem. And I'm also not risking... Uh, pulling more enemies into this situation. That's the main idea of this move. All right. And because I know all of these rooms are gonna be filled with baddies of all sorts, I don't wanna risk getting swarmed by too much when I just entered this level. Another jelly. Let's have some jelly. And for now, I'm going to avoid uh, entering any of these rooms. For now, I just want to try to cover up some space. And there is an artifact scarf. I want to try that out. That could be interesting. Huh. That's actually not more than a <laughs> scarf of resistance. In disguise of art of an artifact well on its own it's a good item but i don't want to drop this magic resistance cloak at this point i feel like i really need it and there is another turtle so i've learned from the last fight that these guys are pretty dangerous on their own and i'm not wearing my cloak anymore so let's just get upstairs for now and put this cloak up again that's the first thing to do and the next thing i want to do is to bring this baddie ba upstairs and isolate him from the chances of reinforcements all right so i'm gonna try to net this guy at least once because that will make him easier to kill and overall i'm winning i've got to regen again silly me 
An Aquamancer. Nice response. All right. She blew up herself on the reflection. It's a nice thing when it happens. All right. So this tile uh, lets me guess that I'm getting closer to Il Suif. And I want to be able to see invisible. And I'm right. She really loves to go in this along the fight. And, well, helps a lot if you're able to see invisible in the first place. So this javelin here is pretty much able to pierce through my defenses, but looks like it doesn't work too well for him. He's actually hurting himself more than he's inflicting damage to me. But I really like to be careful about these because they're pretty good at throwing stuff. Good enough to punch through moderate uh, shield values. And they're pretty much a gear check or uh, no, a skill check on your shields and reflection if you're relying on this mechanism to uh, close out the situation. And here we are, two spellcasters in front of me. The most dangerous part about her are uh, the extra summons she can bring up. And there she goes already. So that's why I want to fall back a bit. I've blown up so many characters in this unique. That's why I'm taking her always with utmost respect. And for now, the safest way to deal with this is just to flee upstairs. I, I went into repost on that Norfolk and stabbed him down pretty decently. And now let's go back downstairs. So I'm swarmed by these water elementals. But they're not doing too much. Uh, they can't drown me because I'm a great draconian. Can't be drowned. And I'm not doing too much to her. She's invisible already. But I realized that I'm not really doing too much damage to her. I'm not going to file a floods here because the water would be actually beneficial for her. Well, I'm going to take a few more swings here. But overall, I'm not taking too much damage either. So it feels like her spells mostly don't hit me. Yeah, I'm slowly winning. And she blinked away once she went a bit lower. So let's see if my Wand of Acid can finish the job. Yeah, I was right. So here we are. The Witch is down. That's certainly good for me. And I always feel a bit uh, relieved once this uh, room is done. She's not on every uh, Schultz 4 ending. But she's a regular customer down here. Mmm, dream sheep. This would have been really nasty with uh, Il Suif. Turns out I was pretty lucky here. But let's not be happy too early. I'm still barbed. It's pretty annoying, all right, and wore off. These wind drakes, they're actually one of the newer additions of the shoals. There was a time you didn't face them down here, but I do like them for uh, their behavior because it fits very well into the shoals theme. And it also provides a new layer of obnoxiousness for this area. Certainly, they like that. 
Not right. So it looks like this was one good way to go. Because so far, surprisingly, the alligator turtles turn out to be the most dangerous thing down here. Oh, getting chunked pretty hard, but it's this crazy glaive in the back line. All right, so wasn't I talking about this goes very well a moment ago? So let's ice blast into this. I really want to get rid of at least one of these guys because I feel like I can punch down this Merfolk pretty quickly. I'm lucky that this Glaive was on the <laughs> Merfolk and not on the Impaler, because the Impaler would have done a lot more with that. All right. But I should have taken this Glaive more serious in the first place. All right, next room. Aquamancer and two turtles. I definitely want to charge into this Aquamancer as quick as possible because those turtles, they hurt some, but they're doable. Poison is getting close to six, and the percentage on Alistair's gets better and better. So this guy is wielding a trident of protection, so he's going to die last. It's going to take a few swings more to bring him down. Slowly getting there, clearing up this level. Oh, that's an uncomfortable situation too. I'm trying to... Oh, never mind. So, yeah. I was thinking about shooting these guys down, but uh, you can't shoot the wind drakes. They are born with a deflect missile skill. But luckily, I get didn't get any more wind blasts into my face. I think I can drop this pile of floods. The elemental will be hostile if it spawns, and I don't want to find uh, find that out the hard way. Because I rely on these uh, files in uh, serious situations, and if I blunder and toss it into the face of an enemy while it's really uh, some sticky situation, and I would be blowing up myself because uh, I don't think it will work. Because I can't have allies anymore, so these water elementals would be the same. I think they would just attack me and not my enemy. All right, Avatar, Javelinier. Mm. Should be pretty doable. I want to bring down the Avatar first to uh, get rid of the mesmerizing stuff just in case stuff goes bad. But turns out everything's good, just as I, just as I thought it would. All right, so where's this room? Still haven't found the room. Okay, poison is up to six. That's the first spot I wanted it to have. And I'm gonna train transmutations now up to 10 and then I'm gonna recheck those uh, percentages on Alistair's. And there we are. Got barbed, but I don't give, give too much about that. So I waited a few turns to uh, get rid of the barbs because before I engage into the siren. Because they don't do too much uh, at a distance. Potion of resistance. That's nice to have. I'm actually gonna drop this ring of protection. I don't think 
to AC will be noticeable at all. And I'm already lacking inventory slots again, so... I think the next room should be containing the room. So let's let's be cautious here. I have a lot of haste potions if this is a very dangerous room. And it is a very dangerous room. Surprise. It's a lot of Equimancers. So the first thing I want to do is go into flight. Because I might lose the ground under my feet. And I'm actually going to go into haste here. I have nine of those potions. And there is an alligator turtle along the, this pack. And that's something which is somehow concerning me. All right, so that's a good position to uh, go into a wand of acid, since they're all beautifully lined up. And yeah, I'm gonna keep spamming this acid wand for now, chunking down the, the turtle. No, I got them all in a straight line again, or no, I didn't. Nah. Well, but I can go into Ice Blast here. That'll hurt them all too. I'm trying to do as much AoE as possible. Still have a lot of HP, so... This should be fine, after all. Let's drop down a few more Ice Blasts until this turtle is gone. This turtle was the major, uh, the major thing I was afraid of, actually. The rest of them guys are, weren't too much of a problem so far. There's some distortion weapon along the way. I overlooked that. Oops. That could have been dangerous, but it wasn't. I have this room. All right. Second room in my pocket. Still more of a fighter than uh, a transmuter. Slowly getting to uh, just don't give too much about it and be drunk and make everybody drunk with this in intoxication along the way. So from transmuter to barkeeper or something like that. Okay, let's check if I found any amnesia. Nope, nothing at all. That's a bit sad. So I'm gonna end this episode here pretty soon, but I'll only end as soon as I have left the shoals because this place is jinxed to me. And I don't wanna relock into a jinxed situation. So I'm gonna get go out of here and gonna go for the entrance to the depths because I feel like that's the next spot where I'm gonna swoop around, do level one, see how I'll fare. If it's gonna be too rough I'm gonna go for um, vaults one instead. But usually with my level of magic resistance uh, vaults will be the more dangerous place because I'm Pretty prone of, uh, to get marked down there with uh, this little amount of magic resistance. So we're going to see how this will work out in the next episode. Again, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time. I hope you're enjoying this. I'm enjoying this run pretty much. I mean, transmuters are pretty interesting to play because you never know where you're going to end, because you're, if you're going to be a living statue or not. So for now, we're more fighterish, but it's okay. Works out pretty fine. It's fun to play. And I'm certainly looking forward to memorizing uh, a few hexes and see how what'll get, what it's going to do with me. And until then, um, yeah, hope you have a good time until we see you again in the next episode. And see you guys soon. Bye-bye.